Good evening to you all. It's a great pleasure for me to attend this warm gathering, although from far distant, owing to the fact that my heart is with you. His Holiness Dalai Lama says we can never obtain peace in the other world until we make peace with ourselves. There have been some stances that a branch of flower was placed on top of the barrel of a gun. What an interesting contrast, gun, a symbol of war and flower, a symbol of peace. The essence of beauty, a word of serenity, elegance and peace, flower. And this choice is the ideal one, the choice of the President's Culture Program, inaugurating the Malta's Presidency of the European Council by a focus on peace and a human well-being as emphasized by Her Excellency President Mary Louise Colliero Preca. It's difficult for me to put my thoughts into words when looking at Oliva's works, but one thing is clear to me the pleasant state of mind and emotion when seeing these blossoms. It's been more than 10 years that I know Lida. At first I came across with her external world, and that then led me to her internal world. As she has stated many times, she's been involved in finding a response to the question of why wars and people killing each other. Her query has been holistic and not limited to geographical or historical boundaries. Consequently, as the one can see, her response is also holistic. Using the positive power of artistic works, she paved a long way from the face of an innocent smiling child, called up in the hands of a Satan to statue-like people, apathetic to injustice and cruelty, and of course to the blossom flowers up to now. This has been the evolution of her visual language. Among the various attempts in finding the essence of beauty and peace, Lida found her way in the works of blossoms, the symbol of rebirth, revival of hope, beauty and life. She says that her flowers, in fact, indicates art for life and not art for art. I want to say that it can also be considered as art for art, but what kind of art? Could the most glorious beauty be found in the world of flowers? When we want to express our deepest sympathy, love and goodness, we turn to flower. When a baby is born, when we graduate, when we get married, and of course, when we die. In such occasions, the flower is the most respected object, the essence of beauty and the best source for artistic creativity. Thus, these works of art could be known as art for art, or better say, art for the best art. Art for being, art for life, and not limited to the walls of galleries. She also talks about heart-to-heart -heart connection, it's in fact a kind of intercultural aesthetic, a kind of beauty that does not belong to a specific culture, gender and race. It is beyond these concepts. It belongs to human and even more than that, to the essence of beauty extracted from all beautiful things in the universe. This intercultural aesthetic reminds me of one of her sayings of suggesting painting for the sake of changing the world. Here we come to the idea of the world. I like to link this to one of her canonical views, internal world, external relations. This in turn reminds me of the concept of a macro and microcosmos suggested in many faiths and beliefs from ancient times up to now. In Timaeus, Plato talks about the human as a microcosm the resemblance of a human body and soul with the universe and the orbit. Ibn Arabi in Futuhat al Makiyya asserts that the perfection of the world has occurred in the existence of a human. He also states that human being is the essence of the creatures. 
Here I would like to point out that with respect to this point of view, one may presume that an artist as a symbol of this small world or microcosm may have an inclusive role as cement for all microcosms from different times and places to be connected and bounded together to make a large, cognate and solid world. This is a task which artists such as Lida Sharafat Mand carry out. Lida has come up with another secret and that is appealing to the essence of beauty among the natural objects and that is flower. It means that she has not only regarded the solidarity among a human being as an authentic concept and attempted in that line, but also appealed to the most valuable, pure and beautiful means for the sake of that notion. The overall distribution of blossoms around the canvas carrying vivid and bright colors might be an indication to unparalleled and unique sweet night dreams. We might have experienced a kind of beauty which is astonishing and it belongs to a higher experience rather than reality. This is in fact a filtered emotion, filtered in turn by reason. It shows us something based on common sense, rooted in the very pure and soft internal senses. It shows the real individuals in a context of a dream, full of symbolism and the conception, the concept of peace and human rights, the right to have peaceful interaction with nature and of course with people ourselves. Through this path she expresses her strong enthusiasm for a universal peace free of time and place boundaries. The appearance of her work may seem pretentious in the first glance but in fact it is a humble narration of simple and repetitive patterns made up of small, intimate blossoms. A dramatic and moving performance between light and darkness can be seen in most cases. The pictorial elements are sometimes ascending from the earth to the very high lighting source and at times act in the reverse direction. But what is obvious is that the final destination ends to an all-inclusive light. This can be compared with the concept of light in ancient faith of monotheism, which is based on the struggle between light and the darkness and the final victory of light. All formal and conceptual features of her works are all my personal justifications think about them as works of sacred art. In an era full of material relations, an artist who lives behind the economic values and the move up the ladder of aesthetic value can be called the messenger of the time, especially when she or he passes on the message of peace, human right and the well-being of humankind. Such an artist can also be compared with a candle which is burnt to give light. As Rumi says, don't say that there are all fights and where on earth I put my offering of pacifism. They are not the one. They are thousands who blaze your light. I'm very happy to see that this light has been raised and flourished in this peaceful land which in turn is placed geographically and historically in the very center of our world, in the middle of a Mediterranean Sea. I consider this coincidence as a good omen, which may bring blessing for the nation and the world, and may mark it as a distinguished event in the history of those who have gifted the world with their very inner peaceful voice, that every day and night call us to be well wisher of ourselves, an aspiration for a world full of peace and friendship, with no war and animosity, a world as peaceful as this beautiful land. Thank you, Lida. Thank you, Mrs. President. Thank you all, and thank you, Malta.